This is a demo of the Moab hybrid cluster and today we're going to show this cluster in action to show it rebooting dynamically back and forth between Windows and SLES. We are connected into our system via PuTTY and we're going to start our demo script and have it reset our cluster so that it is in a known state so that we can start. And we're going to be doing this demonstration using Moab Cluster Manager, which is our administrative GUI tool that is sort of a dashboard for administrators to take a look at the overall state of their cluster at a glance. And you see here, you can see the schedule information, where the schedule is running, the mode, and whatnot. You can also take a look at the node summary to take a look at how many nodes you have, how many are busy or down or idle, and the running jobs. Also, you can get an idea of your overall system utilization over time, and you can take a look at any jobs that you may be running personally. Now, usually administrators only are allowed to use this tool, but if a normal user logs in and uses this tool, they will only see the pieces that they are allowed to use. This is our visual cluster, and this lets you get a look at your cluster from a rack level, and we're going to set it so that you can look at the OS on all of the nodes that it's displaying. We have 11 nodes in this cluster, and we have reset them all so that they are in a known state, 8 in SLES and, and 3 nodes in Windows. And we're also going to be using the jobs view of MCM. And we want to be able to take a look at the required operating system that our jobs will be running in so we can illustrate which jobs need to run in Windows and which jobs need to run in SLES so that when the switch is over we can illustrate that that point and how the cluster is going to behave. So we have 11 nodes here and we have eight of them booted into SLES and we have three of them booted into Windows and the ones that are booted into SLES are in Aquamarine and the ones that are booted into Windows are in blue. So we have purposely set all of the all of the nodes up the way that we want and we're going to start the demo here in just a second and take a look at how Moab is going to reboot the nodes based on the demand. Now we're going to submit 15 jobs and we're going to submit 12 jobs to Windows and 3 jobs to SLES. Now the SLES jobs, since we have a lot of nodes, are going to be able to run immediately, but the Windows jobs are going to be constrained and only 3 of them are going to be able to run at the very beginning. So Moab is going to need to provision some nodes so that it can run the Windows jobs that are required. So we will refresh our jobs view and we'll take a look at the jobs that are running. So we have a lot of Windows jobs that are idle and here we have three jobs running on SLES and three jobs running on Windows. So Moab is going to need to provision some of the nodes to Windows and you see the the icon on all of these nodes means that Moab is provisioning the nodes right now and you can mouse over the icon and it will show you that Moab is provisioning these nodes and the next OS is going to be Windows and it's going to take about a minute for them to reboot. And you see that in the job list you see these Windows jobs that are running instead of Moab.207. And so when a node re reprovisions, Moab actually starts a job on that node called Windows because the, the node is going to reprovision into Windows. And SLES jobs are similar, the provisioning jobs are called SLES. So whatever the active, the next provisioning OS is going to show up there. Now we see that the, the nodes have finished provisioning and Moab has started those Windows jobs on those nodes that, that have just rebooted. So Moab is dynamically adjusting the mix as needed to accommodate these Windows jobs that are in the queue. And we switched the view so that you could see how many jobs still need to run in Windows and how many jobs are running in SLES. Now, since there are still Windows jobs that, or, that need to run, Moab has automatically queued up three Windows provisioning jobs that are waiting on the three SLES nodes to finish. 
So since Moab is a reservation-based scheduler, Moab is looking out into the future and realizing that the slush jobs are going to finish in about 50 seconds. So if we drill down into one of these jobs, MCM allows you to look at any job and from a more fine-grained perspective. So we'll take a look at one of the jobs that's already running. You can take a look at the credentials of the, of the users that are running jobs on your cluster and the, the node list and when it's projected finish, et cetera, et cetera. So we will come back here into our job view and we're just going to take a look at doing a refresh so that we can see that those slush jobs have finished. So since the slush jobs have finished, Moab is now going to adjust the mix even further because it needs to provision even more nodes to satisfy these Windows jobs that are in the queue. So if we go and take a look at this Windows job, one of them that's running, we can see that it's running on node 1. And we can see that root or Moab's user is running it. And we, you can take a look at many various things through the through the MCM interface, such as the users. You can take a look at the groups that are configured on the cluster. And so really MCM is a, is a good tool for you to take a look at what is happening in your cluster and be able to drill down quickly into many different things. So since we've done a refresh, we can see that Moab has provisioned the entire cluster over into Windows. And now, since there, there is nothing more that Moab can do, it's just going to let these jobs run to completion. Now there's one job that's still idle in the queue, but it will run when one of the Windows jobs that it is waiting on, or one of the nodes that it's waiting on, has finished. Now we're going to take a look at some of the other features of Moab Cluster Manager, such as the reporting. So Moab Cluster Manager has very rich charts and graphs capability. Not only can you make charts and graphs from the command line or comma separated files from the command line for parsing by other tools, but you can generate charts and graphs from within the GUI. So we're going to take a look at all of the executed jobs on the system currently. And since this is the test cluster, we only have two users. And Root has been executing the provisioning jobs, and a user has been executing the Windows and Slush jobs that we were just looking at. You can also use MCM for capacity planning. For example, you can take a look at your over overall system utilization over time. And you can also take a look at, for example, graphs about your node usage, um, your node failures, and other things. Now, you can also do reports for users that are running jobs so that you can take a look at which users are most heavily using the system, um, how many jobs have been run on average, how many jobs have been run total. And so MCM is, is very flexible in the kinds of, of charts and graphs that you can produce. Now, you can also control some of your credentials through MCM. You can also take a look at your nodes, take a look at your cluster as a whole, so thanks for joining us for this demo today, and for more information, visit www.clusterresources.com slash hybrid.